hello again everybody um since it is well i don't know when i'll actually get this edited but since while i'm recording this it is currently october i figured i would make a video about some of my paranormal experiences i have had like a lot of paranormal experiences there are plenty that i've forgotten because I've had a ton um, and some of them are not the most pleasant so I kind of just we just don't think about those I guess I'll start at the beginning the very first experience that I remember having was I believe it was right after my grandfather passed away because I don't remember him having any input on the situation and he would have so if it was right after he passed away I was um, just out of sixth grade so I believe I would have been 12 okay so what had happened is I was in bed I had been asleep I never ever slept with my door open I don't know why but it always made me uncomfortable to sleep with my door open so like I always had my door closed if I was sleeping if I felt like I was gonna fall asleep and like even in general if I was in my room I pretty much had the door closed so on this night I woke up I looked over to the door it was like the middle of the night it was super quiet in the house my mom and my brother were asleep I looked over at the door and I saw this girl standing in my doorway my door was open she was standing in the doorway she was wearing like a white dress um, it was like I could tell it was from like a long time ago um, she was just standing there holding the handle of my door and looking at me and I like sat up out of my bed to look at her because I was like like I'm confused my door is open and who is this and then I realized that this is not a physical person um, it is like a spirit being and so I'm just kind of staring at her for a minute and then all of a sudden I get pushed back into my bed so now I'm laying down flat again and I started freaking out and I couldn't move as I was falling back I like instinctively put my hands up to my face so I couldn't move and I could no longer like see anything because my hands were my face and I was trying to move and I just kept trying to move like this and I couldn't move couldn't move so I started screaming and I started screaming for my mom and I was, mom 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 and my mom was a very light sleeper like she would hear things on the roof um, in the middle of the night like she would hear like a cat or a raccoon or whatever on the roof and she would get up out of bed and make sure that me and my brother were still in bed um not trying to sneak out I, I don't know why we would end up on the roof if we were trying to sneak out but you know <laughs> she would make sure like no one was trying to sneak out and she would go out and check the roof make sure nobody was trying to sneak in um she was a very very light sleeper and i kept screaming for my mom and it's like i'm sitting there thinking like why why isn't she coming why isn't she coming and I was just getting like I still was being pushed down and I could not move like something was holding me down in my bed and so after screaming for my mom for so long I just let out this like blood curdling scream and once I let out that scream the pressure was finally released whatever was holding me down was gone I saw the little girl and then she was gone and then I got up and I went into the um, other room where my mom and my brother were sleeping 
um, he was really little. He was, if I was 12, he was four. Um, so he usually ended up in my mom's bed at some point during the night when he was that age. So I went into my mom's room and I was pissed off. And I was like, mom. And she immediately woke up and I was like, how did you not hear me? What were you doing? Why didn't you wake up? Why didn't you come in the room? And she was like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, I was screaming. And like my throat hurt from screaming so much. And I was like, I was screaming for you. You didn't hear me? She was like, no, I didn't hear you. What's wrong? And then I told her what I saw. And I ended up sleeping in her bed with her that night. She decided to tell my aunt, and then my aunt, I don't know if my aunt told the rest of the family or if my mom told my aunt in front of the rest of the family, but they started making fun of me for thinking that I saw a ghost. So, eventually I got tired of them making fun of me, so I was like, okay, I have, I tried to like reason it away and um, give them some other explanation of what it could be. Not that, like I knew what I saw um, but and what I experienced, but I wanted to get them to stop, so I had to come up with something that could explain what happened, right? So, I have a white, I had a white door. Um, my room was painted blue and my door was painted white. And I also had white blinds. In front of my window I had a dresser and then on the dresser there was, um, like I had like a nice, for that time period, I had like a nice stereo with like some big speakers, like this big. And then I had a circular piggy bank that was on top of the speakers and or the like there was one speaker in front of the window and then one speaker on the other end of the dresser so I had you know it was like a box shape and like a round shape um it was an m, m bank so like I wanted them to shut up so I eventually told my mom I was like you know what I think what it actually was you know I was kind of asleep and so like I woke up and I saw the shape of what I thought was a person you know the the piggy bank and the the um the speaker in front of my window I thought I was looking at my door but I was looking at my window and that was you know I I thought that was person shaped so then she goes and tells my aunt the whole family Here's about that. And then they, for years, do not stop teasing me about how I thought that Eminem Piggy Bank was ghost. So that didn't help. I, like, after that, I really wish that I would have just let them think I was crazy. I mean, they thought I was crazy either way. But, you know, better to have stood up for myself and told them to fuck off teasing me or rather than to have tried to come up with some explanation for it and then get teased even more because that clearly does not explain what I saw um, or what I experienced like even if I did look in that direction and see a silhouette of what looked like a person like a circle on top of a rectangle doesn't make a person that would not explain the physical experience that I had. Now, looking back on that from years down the line, um, I believe that was my first experience with the Morrigan. I believe that she was in the form of the little girl because I did not feel anything negative from the little girl. I um, felt that the little girl was there more to warn or to protect rather than to mess with me. And the Morgan is a shapeshifter. She can take on whatever shape she wants to, though people don't tend to associate her with a uh, child or like a maiden form. The Morgan 
is a shapeshifter and she can present herself in any way that she wants and she does test perception and I feel like I mean to be honest if Morgan presented herself in a way more similar to how she normally presents herself to me um, that would have been fucking terrifying for 12 year old me so her presenting herself as a younger girl closer to my own age that was more comforting to me at that time and since then I have had other experiences where in order to get a spirit to leave me alone I have to scream at them and I think that's very much a baby thing last year sometime I think I did have a consult with Joey Morris and we talked about the Morian and that was something that we actually talked about um, because she has a similar experience and like I didn't put two and two together that like that was where that was coming from until I heard her talking about it that working with the Morgan comes with the death scream aspect and um, that you know she will use the death scream as a protective thing like a get the fuck out of my face you can't mess with me type thing and so like once I heard her talking about it I was like oh my god that's you know that's what's happening is that's where that comes from is her duh <laughs> that's where it comes from so that was my very first ghosty uh, spirit related paranormal type experience that I can remember um, I may have had others as a child but I don't remember them like I said I had a lot of spiritual experience or like spirit related experiences after my grandfather passed away I did like see him a lot when my family passes away I see them it's never like shocking or crazy to me that I see them um, it's just a thing that happens I'm pretty sure I had some more experiences in my mom's house but not that many because I was very shut down especially after the reaction that I got from my family I was pretty shut down then after I moved out and into my then boyfriend now fiance's house um, with him and his parents I had a huge increase in activity I think part of it was that there was some negative things happening in like all of our lives at that time just like the energy in the house was off and at that point I didn't really know how to deal with it yet but I did have quite a few things happen there there was like a cat that lived there uh, we would just see like this ghost cat every now and then um, like we have a cat but we would see another cat <laughs> one experience that sticks out to me was um, when I first moved in I was sleeping in Greg's sister's room she wasn't living there at the time um, but she still had a room there and that's where I was sleeping and I again woke up in the middle of the night and sat straight up and she had a street lamp directly outside of the window in that room so even in the middle of the night like she it had very light curtains so even in the middle of the night um there would be a yellow glow in the room there was it was never like dark in the room so I woke up and I sat straight up and I was like looking around and it was pitch black which was strange um, and then I saw like directly in front of me like right here a face I can 
only describe it as like a tribal mask type face um like most similar to like a tiki type thing but in nothing that i've ever seen would come close enough to be like yes that's the type of style that it was but that's like the closest thing that i can say and it was it was completely black as well but all of the outlines um of the face and any sort of detail was a glowing green and then this face had two horns but they weren't perfectly symmetrical like they twisted in two separate directions and it just kind of floated there for a minute and then I was like what the fuck and then it rushed my face and this thing went straight through my face and out the back of my head and when that happened my head went straight back and banged against the wall behind the bed because the bed was pushed up against the wall and my head went straight back and hit the wall okay again <laughs> sorry I really need to get a new battery for my camera so trying to remember the story I was telling you I woke up in the middle of the night pitch black face in front of me goes through my head and as it goes through my head my head jerks back hits the wall behind me and um, the thing just continues straight on through my face through the back of my head now I think what I was trying to say is that I, I don't know that I was like pushed into the wall that sounds kind of drastic and it didn't feel like I had been pushed but I guess possibly as a reaction to something rushing your face you kind of instinctively just pull back but um I had to pull back like really hard <laughs> I hit my head really hard and so after that after the thing goes through my head I hit my head on the wall then it's no longer like super pitch black so like the you know the yellow glow in the room comes back I'm just kind of like what in the world just happened I get up out of bed I go into Greg's room and I was like did you not hear that and he's like no what like what was I supposed to have heard and I was like well that just hit my head on the wall pretty hard and like your bed is right here because we like shared a wall and his bed was up against the wall and my bed was up against the wall I'm like you're right here you didn't hear that and he was like no I didn't hear anything I'm like well I'm sleeping with you tonight and I was like oh, okay um obviously we didn't we preferred to sleep together but it was you know parents rules that we slept in separate beds so just went to sleep in his bed nothing else happened that night I've never seen that exact same thing again um, like I said there was a lot of different experiences that I had in that house like a ton and I never saw that same thing again I mean it could have just been like a thing but I kind of suspect that it may have been pan only because he has come to me a few times I don't know why I have a resistance to him but I do so he like he's come to me multiple times and every time I just have like this resistance to him I'm like okay hi cool what's up and then I don't pursue that relationship any further I don't completely ignore that he's there I'll, like you know I'll acknowledge that he's there but I for some reason I can't get past that point um, but the reason why I suspect it may have been him is because every time I see him he uh, appears slightly differently 
but every single time he has like a greenish tealish glow about him I don't know if he presents himself that way to anybody else but that's how he presents himself to me and um, I always know with 100% certainty aside from this first instance um, when he has come to me I've always known with 100% certainty that it's him and all like talk to Greg about it sometimes and he's like well are you sure it's Pan you know he could be like could be some other horn god could be and I'm like no like it's Pan like there's no it's Pan so because of that green glow coupled with the horns I suspect that it may have been him but I don't know because he's never come to me as just a head before um, so that was an experience. Then I also had, in that same house, once I was in the same room as Greg, um, I had an experience with Bave, and I didn't know at the time that it was Bave, but, um, that's who it was. So... I had this experience where one night um, things were just very active in the house. Um, I was feeling like there were spirits coming in and out of the room and I didn't know what was going on and it was kind of um, starting to bother me and so I laid down and when I laid down in through the window came this woman and she was a kind of an average sized woman but I mean m maybe a little bit on the thin side but she wasn't like she wasn't like super skinny or anything um so she was like pretty average sized and she had hair a little longer than mine maybe like to here gray thin hair like I imagine it would be if I had touched it it would be like baby soft um like you know when little kids their hair finally starts growing out and it's just so soft and silky and kind of thin that's the kind of hair that she had straight gray thin soft hair and she came right into my face and she put her forehead on my forehead and started wailing and she just kept wailing and wailing and wailing and I started to cry I was like I don't know what's going on and like she's so upset and I feel so upset and it was a lot of intense intense grief that I was feeling and I started crying and I was just like laying there for maybe like five minutes um, and we were just crying forehead to forehead just deep in grief and as far as I can remember, there was nothing going on with me at the time. Like, I was fine before that. I was a little bit put off by all of the um, energy that night and, like, feeling like there were spirits coming in and out. Not to the point where I felt like I had to do anything about it. Like, nobody was being rude, but it was just kind of maybe, like, more of an annoyance that 
there were just like spirits coming in and out of the room. That was probably my, aside from my very first experience, it was probably my most intense experience and both of those experiences happened with an aspect of the Morgan.